profissional. Né?
transfer to go with the inner urban, inner urban cars or inner urban transit system. And he had the vision that, that electric rail would replace steam locomotives and would haul freight as well as passengers all around the United States. Not just, as like I say, inside Los Angeles or say inside San Francisco. And the reason that he visioned this as being a better way was there were three main factors involved. One, number one is that the well, steam locomotives were very expensive to build and maintain, whereas electric trains were very, really inexpensive to build and very inexpensive to maintain. They could climb a hill much more capably than can a, uh, a uh, steam locomotive. Steam locomotives, if you know, have to go very slowly, and so they wind back and forth when they're trying to climb a mountainside. Whereas a trolley car can almost go straight up. It, it has its limits too, but it can go much more quickly. And finally, a trolley train can go on a much narrower or smaller curve than can a steam locomotive because you had to have a gondola behind and all of that that goes with it. So you had to have a really wide curve to carry that kind of a train up a mountainside. So those are kind of the basics of why he foresaw or he perceived that trolleys would, which he called interurbans, I don't use the word interurban, he envisioned these interurbans traveling all around America. So in the year 1900, he didn't want to let, there was a lot of politics, as there is today, <laughs> and he did not want to reveal his plans or his vision to all of his friends or, or, or even all of his associates. And there were a lot of big names who were concerned or had ideas about public transportation back in the year 1900. And I'll name those names for you, which you will all recognize. The Harrimans, the Chandlers, the Hursts, as well as the Huntington. So there were a lot of large names, and these other family names and families were also interested, and they were, and they actually were working in opposition to Huntington in terms of building this system. He didn't, as I said, he more names you will recognize: Slauson, Shoup, Slauson Avenue, the Shoup Avenue on the West San Fernando Valley, uh, Randolph, Epi's Randolph, is a Randolph Street down in the South Gate Bell area. I'm not sure exactly where it is. Uh, McClay was another name, and these people were all associated. He was a judge, by the way. Uh, he was all he was associated with Huntington in building trolleys and trolley systems in, in this area. So, to start out with, Henry's first main train system that he envisioned was. The one that somebody here in the room was telling me he rode, in, rode just before it shut down, and that is the trolley between Los Angeles and Long Beach, which was the first trolley line to be built, and it was the last trolley line to run in Los Angeles, or the old Pacific Electric system, which Henry did not call Pacific Electric, he called it the Los Angeles Railway System. And he built the train system in such a way that the rails were the same size, the same width as steam systems, as the steam locomotives of the, of the Southern Pacific. For he could then convince other rail systems that were sending their cars into this area to use his track. Okay. So he was, he was a businessman, so he was looking for ways to make money on this too. He wasn't, he wasn't an idealist. And the idea really was land development. All of these people that were involved were all concerned with land development and convincing you Easterners, right, or your parents, to move out here and don't worry about the fact that you don't have a car because you can get from place to place using our terrific public transportation system. That was the sales pitch. That was the pitch to get you to come and move to Los Angeles. Because he wanted to sell land along the route and convince you Easterners to move out here and you'd have a nice home and you'd be close to the trolley line and you could commute into town. And those days, of course, even in the 40s, you know, the communities of some of them, of course, are right next door to each other, but the communities in the San Fernando Valley were all separate from each other, and it was all farmland between Burbank and North Hollywood, you know, the park and Cedar, and I haven't done I haven't listed those in order, sorry. But all these communities were all separate by farms. 
and down in Orange County by Orange Fields, Orange Groves, Orange, Fields. Orange Groves. I can remember that Orange County was all Orange Groves. So his vision was to help all these little communities connect together and we have a transportation system. This was done, this picture was taken sometime between 1900 and 1910. And you'll notice that there was a lack of cars on the street. There's a few horse-drawn wagons and there are a few trolleys, but there are no cars. Cars were not at all that common, were all that common. People couldn't afford them. So the, the trolley system really was an important part of uh, the uh, form mode of transportation for the area. Now when he started to build the trolley line from Los Angeles, or he wanted to build the trolley from Los Angeles to Long Beach, he had to fight all of those main families that I just mentioned earlier. They all were opposing him, and they were all had their own ideas about how a trolley line ought to look and who ought to have the right to get the franchise to build it. And they argued about the same things that people in Los Angeles argue about today, about whether their trolley line should exist. The noise, and they probably are more concerned about congestion, even though there was no congestion in those days to speak of. But they argued about all of that, and they finally, it was not the city of Los Angeles, but the city of Long Beach, with their 2,000 people, that was concerned about the problems that might be involved. And the book didn't really tell me what it was that they were going to be concerned with, but whatever, they finally decided to let them go ahead and build the system. They had it approved, and the entire system built from Los Angeles, he may not have had a lot of cars, but he had a few cars in place, by July 4th. They seemed to have this thing about July 4th in those days. Everything was built around the 4th of July. The, uh, the first cars started running from Long Beach, Los Angeles to Long Beach, whichever way it ran first, on the 4th of July of, of 1902. So nine months, he had the bed laid, the track laid, the overhead wires, the cars, everything in place, and he was running in nine months. Is that spectacular? What's interesting about this is this is similar to the cars that are on the cable car in San Francisco. Okay, I can wait. You don't see that. As you can see, it's open along the side like a San Francisco cable car. Apparently, that was what they thought was the right way to do things. But he's sitting on people sitting on the outside and just jumping on on the train, on the trolley, similar to the, like I said, the San Francisco cable cars. And there was a lot of pictures. Look how nice this is. Yes. So between 19, after he built the, after he built the line from Long Beach to Los Angeles, he then started to absorb smaller systems that had been built by individual smaller companies in the Los Angeles area. And his vision was, as I said, I'm going to build a system that's going to cover this entire basic area. And as Lloyd said, there was a trolley that went all the way out to uh, San Bernardino and beyond, down to um, Balboa Island. Now, if you go to Balboa Island today, out on the, well, it's not really an island, right? If you go out there to the island, there's just a little amusement park, and beyond the amusement park, there's kind of a little building with some kind of a round-shaped building right almost at the end of the peninsula. That was the roundhouse turnaround point for the trolleys. That's one of the few remaining physical things that, that the guy was a visionary, as you can see. For today, what are we doing? We're building a new system that is probably going to reflect his layout from that he envisioned back into these inner urbans. Not as just trolley cars going down the street, which are single cars, but the Pacific Electric red cars, they were a string of cars that were that, that he ran together, put them together almost like a train. And they would go to the more remote areas. Off a train of four four seven hundred class trolleys built in nineteen oh seven and nineteen oh eight by the St. Louis Car Company stopped for a picture at Sherman, don't know where that is, which was just of east of Beverly Hills. San Bernardino Valley Traction Company car built 1906 by Grill is shown on Crescent Avenue in Redlands. I don't know where that is. But any of that, 
the correct cars in the San Fernando Valley were strung together this way, and they were also strung together this way on the train or urban that went from Long Beach down to, or up to Los Angeles. And I'm sure it was the same way on those that went out to in San Bernardino and Riverside and places like that. I have to tell you that there was a lot of politics that were involved in this. We are a political people, aren't we? Even today. The politics of the time and the fighting, infighting, <coughs> even within the Huntington family about building the rail, the Los Angeles Railway, as, as Henry Huntington called it, was very apparent. He had been the president of Southern Pacific when he started this whole thing. Huntington, the same family, Huntington Library, right here, right? And Huntington Drive. I have to point you in the wrong direction. I know. <laughs> it's not me. Thank you. In any event, Huntington Drive and Huntington Library, it's the family, it's that same family. And they were infighting within the family about this whole thing. And it turned out that the Southern Pacific started on the QT buying stock inside the Los Angeles Railway System, as it was called in those days. And when Henry found out about it, he split off part of the company into a separate company that he totally owned in his own name. In other words, there was no stock. And that became the start of the Pacific Electric. And the rest of the Los Angeles railway system subsequently, you guys aren't that much older than me, uh, became Los Angeles Transit. And in the, in the central part of Los Angeles, you remember the yellow bus and the yellow trolleys. Los Angeles Transit was an outgrowth of the Los Angeles railway system, which was the stock-owned company. And the Pacific Electric, it was owned by Henry Huntington, period. There was no stockholders. He was that rich. Uh, and he's the one who, 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 as I say, actually built most of what we see or what we do of in Los Angeles, it's all of the railway system, that entire thing there. His efforts to try to keep the Southern Pacific, and obviously it was a family feud, Southern Pacific kept buying in more and more and more, and ultimately the Southern Pacific bought the Pacific Electric. They bought it out. It was, it was like a family thing. They actually took it over. The, the height of all of the system, all that went on, the peak of, of activity for the trolley system was the 1940s. That's when more people were using it than any other time, at any other time. These are a couple more interesting pictures I thought were interesting. I guess I'm going to be thinking about right now. That's the line that went to Pasadena, obviously. And I don't know right offhand where that is physically located, but if you go up around uh, off of uh, Arroyo Seco and all those avenues that are off, off ramps off of the Pasadena Freeway, you will see those kinds of homes, that, you, that one that you see in the background there, maybe that's the museum there, the Southwestern Museum, who knows. But that, you'll see the remains of many areas where there obviously was track lane. <laughs> and there's the there's a picture of the trolley that went down to, as I said, the down to the Balboa Island area, down to Newport Beach. And the trolley is pretty much more the same. Regardless, it's not really too much you can do with a trolley. A trolley is a trolley is a trolley, right? And that's the building. Now, like I say, you go down to Balboa Island, you will recognize this building right, at the, right beyond the amusement park up on Balboa. I see somebody shaking their head. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's fascinating that that building is still there. I remember you already suggested is that we're now rebuilding the whole thing the way it was to begin with, which really does reflect the vision of the man. He really knew what he had the vision to see what was going to come in to Los Angeles in the future. Actually, interestingly, in this book that I obtained all these pictures from, this fellow was the nice, nice groomed of all the people from that era. The rest of them really looked like they were like cowboys and didn't look like anybody you, you know, you saw them walking down the street, you probably would say, across the street, go on the other side. Because they all looked pretty rough by, uh, 
comparison to what we would expect. But this doll actually was nicely groomed. This is Henry Hunt. And as I say, actually, someone very nicely did some printouts of some of the of, of the red cars right there that are better than the one that I actually did a picture of. These were both, as I said, probably right after World War II, probably 1945 to 1948. Uh, they were the streamlined version, but they still were same, basically the same route, same trolley, just modernized the outside of the, the, the trolley a little bit to get a little more streamlined effect. When did they stop growing? The last trolley was September of 1961. And I'm, did you say that? Because that's my last photo right here. And that's a picture of the Long Beach Line, the little boy. The last trolley ran in September of 1961 between that, they cut the system down to nothing. And it was a big rush on the last two days where everybody wanted to get on the trolley and have one last ride. I need to drive being the most obvious mm -hmm. one. Venice Boulevard, is it not so uh, Chandler Boulevard, and Sherman Way, and San Fernando Valley, Grand Boulevard, and Glendale, and every other wide, really wide boulevard that has a parkway down the middle, was probably or it had tracks down the middle of it. What kind of it pulled tracks down to the parkway, wide the street, and that was the end of it. So that's really the source of all of our wide boulevards in Los Angeles. Was, was building all of those. Uh, trolley systems down the middle of the streets. So uh, it's just standing for that much. This is going to be a yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>